It seems that between August and September, pumpkin beers begin trickling out into stores. But if you want to make one your own with real pumpkin, you have to wait until early October to get your hands on an actual pumpkin when they're in season, which is why this video is coming out just after Halloween. Additionally, last year I tried a whole bunch in a two-part series trying to figure out exactly what a pumpkin beer is and what's a great example of that style. And I settled on two beers. The most iconic, the one that always reminds me of a pumpkin beer is from Shipyard. The most surprising one of all those was Lakefront's Pumpkin Lager. This is what 2021 Ben had to say about that beer. I think they nailed it. I think this is definitely worth trying if you're looking for it. I don't I mean, obviously other styles would play differently with pumpkin, but this for being super clean and the spices are really pronounced, this is it. This is the pumpkin beer. Because of how much I like that beer, I wanted to try to make a homebrewed version of that, or at least a beer that mirrored it in the end. That meant using Mount Hood hops and a similar grain bill to what's listed on their website. The major exception, of course, is I don't have a way to brew a lager, and I want this beer to be ready for Halloween. So that means I'm gonna ferment using Kvike yeast and specifically the Lutra strain. So I can ferment it at a warm temperature, and I'm also gonna do this under pressure. Now that pumpkins are in season, I went to my local farm stand and picked up this fairy tale pumpkin, and the first step to making this beer begins by roasting the pumpkin and turning it into a puree. If you want to see exactly how we did that, I'll link that video down below, because I made this last year on the channel. I'm aiming to make about one and a half gallons worth of wort, so that means I'm gonna start with two gallons of reverse osmosis water. After adding it to the brew kettle, I began to heat the water up to the mash temp, and as it warms up, I'm gonna add some brewing salts into the water with the target water profile being written down below in the video description. Then after mixing the salts into the water, I'll wait till the water hits the desired temperature of 152 before adding in my mash bag, to hold, which will hold the grains for the brew in the bag method. And then I'll decrease the temp to 148 for a 60 minute mash. For the grain bill, I'm using 80% two row, 15% Munich malt, and 5% caramel 20, which loosely is based on Lakefront's pumpkin lager recipe on their website. Once the grain is added, I'll mix the grains up with a brew spoon to break up any dough balls. And then it's time to add the last item, which is one pound of that homemade pumpkin puree, which I think in the end actually added 0 0.01 uh, points of gravity to the original gravity of the final beer. After one hour, I pulled the grains from the kettle and placed it over the second kettle where I rinsed the grains with 0.3 gallons of water that was heated up to 170 degrees. To get to a pre-boil volume of two gallons, I squeeze the grains in the bag and then add that back to the brew kettle. At the beginning of the boil, I'm gonna add 0.2 ounces of Mount Hood hops for some bitterness. And then with 10 minutes left, I'm gonna add in one and a half teaspoons or four grams of pumpkin pie spice. I only ended up boiling for 40 minutes because that's how long it took for a half a gallon of water to evaporate off from my kettle. Additionally, at the end of the boil, I decided that the rest of the 0.8 ounces of Mount Hood hops that I had so they wouldn't go to waste, and then I chilled the beer down to 85 degrees, pulled a sample for the original gravity, and placed that aside. Now, my plan was to have this ready in time for Halloween, which gives me nine days from brew day, so the plan was to add the beer to my keg, ferment under pressure around 10 psi, and because I'm going to pitch under a warmer temperature, the use of choice, as I said before, was Lutra could like. And based on the yeast calculator on their website, it recommends about 40% of the packet into the fermenter. I then sealed it up, let the yeast do its magic, convert sugar into alcohol, and successfully ferment under pressure, add the spunning valve to the gas in post, and set the pressure to release at 10 psi. Now finding the original gravity of this beer, it was at 1070, which is a little bit higher than I planned as I was aiming for 1.061, but the pumpkin clearly added a little bit of sugar to this and boosted up that original gravity. Now seven days later and two days to Halloween, I took a sample from the beer to see where it was at, and since it's still under pressure, I had to wait for the beer to degas to get a proper gravity reading. I took a gravity reading and it read 1.020, which is about 70% of the yeast viability, which is close enough to my final target gravity, which is 1.015. Lastly, before transferring it into the new keg for serving, I want to check the spice level by taking a sample of it at this point, and adjusting if needed by adding more spice. And to me, tasting at this point, it definitely needed more, so that's why I add another teaspoon, which is about three grams of pumpkin pie spice into the keg directly. I then purge the keg with CO2 and then pressure transferred from the fermenter keg into the smaller serving keg at a 10 PSI. I place that in the fridge overnight, adding some additional CO2 the next day and set the PSI for 10. So the beer is done. So let's see how this pumpkin beer turned out. All right, thanks for watching too. The tasting portion of the video. So here's the pumpkin ale that I made 
now it's been 10 days since I brewed it. Um, I have a little bit of problem with just trying to adjust the PSI and the keg, so it's a little over carbonated when I poured it, but overall that's okay. I just got to release a little bit of pressure for future pours. Um, so overall, I mean, it's got a really nice head retention, though. Like, even after that pour, like, look at that. It's still, like, sitting there pretty well. Very nice creamy white head. The color, it's still pretty hazy. I'm guessing that if I let this sit in the fridge, you know, for a little bit longer, or I used a... Um, or a flock tablet in the actual boil that it would have helped clear it out. But it's still pretty easy at this point. It's kind of got this, you know, orangey, almost reminds me of like a darker colored, um, like New England IPA color, but not in a bad way. Um, probably coming from the Munich malt, a little bit of the caramel malt. Yeah, so let's get into the tasting portion. So we'll start with the aroma. I mean, right off the bat, the spice is really nice. I think that there's like a lot of like cinnamon character to it, which I think is probably coming from adding the fresh spice into the keg before transferring it into it. Um, let's go for the taste. It's got a mild forward spiciness. I think it could be a little bit more, which I think would help if I added more into the oil, which I think would lead to a more bitterness. Surprisingly, for adding about an ounce of hops into this, even at the Whirlflock to get more of an air, to get an aroma in the Whirlpool or at the end of the boil, there's no hop bitterness, no hop character whatsoever. So I think that's why Mount Hood was chosen to kind of just give some clean bitterness, but not to overwhelm anything else. Because in a pumpkin beer, you don't want any hop character. The thing that I think that's missing, which you get in a lot of American ales, is like a carameliness and like which comes from caramel malts and other things like that. And so like a little bit of depth. Um, and I think it's also not as crisp as the pumpkin lager that I had. Again, that one probably lagered for at least a month to kind of clean it all out. This is super young. I mean, this is 10 days from brew day to now. So that's pretty amazing. I mean, it was done in seven, kicked it up to kind of let it carbonate naturally over two days. So yeah, I mean, this is good. I think this is a great baseline. I think next time if I brew this, I'll choose a different yeast, maybe more of an American ale yeast or a California yeast strain like Chico or any of those type of things to get more of that. Um, and I definitely think upping the spice. There's not a whole lot of pumpkin character despite adding the pumpkin puree. I don't know, maybe adding it as like roasted pumpkin to the boil may change the flavor, but it's kind of hard to impart that because like when you think of pumpkin like anything pumpkin, it's just really the spice. So that's that cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, clove, all spice. It's kind of baking spices that go into pumpkin pie is really what you think of. And it's there on the aroma. I mean, it's dead on. Like you really get a nice, strong spice on the nose. So that's right. So I think do adding some spice into the keg at the end doesn't affect the bitterness or anything like that because it is going to be cold and it does help the aroma. Kind of like dry hopping in a keg. I think it's kind of like the same thing so i think it's a good baseline if you have any way to know kind of help with that body drop a comment down below and i'll definitely try to brew again in the future i like pumpkin beers i think they're a great seasonal beer so i'll definitely brew again next year when pumpkins come back in the season um you know i think this video is coming out right at the end of pumpkin season but this beer if you brew this now will be more than ready for Thanksgiving, which is a perfect time also to drink because as I'm sure this would pair very well with pumpkin pie. And the Lutri yeast strain, especially if you heat it, can be done in as short as like four to seven days. I know I've seen like a hard seltzer using Lutra and it was done in four days, amazingly. So it's clean though. There's no off flavor whatsoever. It just needs a little bit more depth to the beer. Um, again, I think that would come from the spice as well as adding some maybe more specialty malts to kind of round out the bill. Uh, yeah, so that's my attempt to try to make a pumpkin beer basically right at on Halloween because that's when I'm shooting this. So I think it's, it's a success in that portion. I got about a gallon ish in the keg from now to enjoy from now on Thanksgiving. Um, if you watch this long, I appreciate you following it. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you like this type of content. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.